the depths of space right now are something we have open access to to study. As a result of that, people have been trying to peer into the depths so that we can learn more from it. A key resource on that front are the massive telescopes that enable us to get glimpses of what's out there. But for the James Webb Telescope, things are going to get a bit more detailed because it's going to be looking for a specific gas that will hopefully guide us towards potential life on other planets. Allow us to show you how NASA's new James Webb Space Telescope will be able to sniff out methane. Methane equals life? The first whiff that humans catch of life beyond Earth might be methane, but scientists will need to tread carefully before declaring a discovery based on the chemical. If an exoplanet's atmosphere contains methane, the chemical could be a sign of life, as long as planetary conditions meet certain criteria. Researchers from the University of California, Santa Cruz, have now established a framework for those conditions to guide scientists evaluating alien worlds. The analysis is well-timed since NASA's recently launched James Webb Space Telescope should be able to detect atmospheric methane at certain alien worlds. In the case of a small rocky planet orbiting a star like our Sun, the researchers found that atmospheric methane is more likely to be a biosignature, a sign that indicates past or present life, if the planet meets three conditions. If there is also atmospheric carbon dioxide, if the atmosphere has more methane than carbon monoxide, and if the planet is not water rich. One molecule is not going to give you the answer. You have to take into account the planet's full context. Lead author Maggie Thompson, a graduate student at UC Santa Cruz, said in a statement, Methane is one piece of the puzzle, but to determine if there is life on a planet, you have to consider its geochemistry how it's interacting with its star, and the many processes that can affect a planet's atmosphere on geologic timescales. While methane has long been considered a potential biosignature, there are a number of non-biological processes that can produce the gas, from volcanic eruptions to asteroid impacts. So, the UCE Santa Cruz researchers also focused on reducing the likelihood of false positives when identifying atmospheric methane as a biosignature. For example, Outgassing from volcanoes would not only add methane to the atmosphere, but also carbon monoxide, whereas the biological creation of methane would likely consume carbon monoxide. Therefore, if an atmosphere has both large quantities of methane and carbon monoxide, the methane is not likely a biosignature. And that's why we are going to depend on a certain telescope to help get things going to figure out which is which. James Webb As NASA James Webb Telescope comes to life this summer, it will be able to study atmospheric methane in greater detail than other potential biosignatures, hence the scientists' interest in new analysis. But the researchers caution that real data about real planets may still pose puzzles. This study is focused on the most obvious false positives for methane as a biosignature. Co-author Joshua Chrysanthemum Totten, an astrobiologist at UC Santa Cruz, said in the statement, The atmosphere of rocky exoplanets are probably going to surprise us, and we will need to be cautious in our interpretations, as they should be, because they don't want to make a mistake that could cause issues down the line. And that's why the James Webb Telescope needs to be at 100% power and capacity and be able to go forward with all that it was intended for. Building a better telescope. The Webb represents the culmination of decades, if not centuries of astronomy, says Sarah Seeger, a planetary scientist and astrophysicist at MIT. We've been waiting for this a very long time. Scientists started thinking about a follow-up even before the Hubble Space Telescope launched in 1990. After more than three decades in space, it's unclear how much longer this boundary-breaking satellite will be able to scan and photograph the universe. The Webb was originally supposed to launch in 2010 and cost around $1 billion. Its price tag ballooned to $10 billion and it's way overdue but the wait will be worth it, at least according to the scientists who expect new and revealing glimpses of our universe. We're going right up to the edge of the observable universe with Webb, says Caitlin Casey, an assistant professor of astronomy at the University of Texas at Austin. And yeah, we're excited to see what's out there. The Webb will surpass the Hubble in several ways. It will allow astronomers to look not only farther out in space, but also further back in time. It will search for the first stars and galaxies of the universe. It will also allow scientists to make careful studies of numerous exoplanets, planets that orbit stars other than our Sun, and even embarked on a search for signs of life out there. The web is a machine for answering unanswered questions about the universe, for exploring what has been unexplorable until now, including, as noted, finding methane on planets that might just be able to support life. From Hubble to Webb 
The launch of the Hubble Space Telescope, named after famed astronomer Edwin Hubble, was itself a huge leap forward for astronomy. Here on Earth, astronomers seek out remote mountaintops and deserts to build major telescopes for the best chance of viewing a dark sky away from pollution and bright lights. But their view is still marred by the slight haze and luminescence of the Earth's atmosphere. Space is the ultimate mountaintop, as NASA explains. There's no better view of space than the one from, well, space. Hubble has meant so much during its 30-year run. For one thing, it sent us unforgettable, jaw-droppingly beautiful images like those of the Lagoon Nebula and the Pillars of Creation. It's also taught us about the age of the universe, about what happens when stars explode, and about black holes. It helped establish many of the boundaries that the web hopes to push. Most powerfully, its observations have led scientists to believe the universe is expanding at an accelerating rate, propelled by something so mysterious that scientists simply call it dark energy. The web is controversial, named for the man who led NASA in the decade leading up to the moon landing. James Webb, its namesake, was a government bureaucrat at a time when it was federal policy to fire gay staffers. While current NASA Administrator Bill Nelson has said that the agency has found no evidence at this time that warrants changing the name of the James Webb Space Telescope, more than 1,700 people have signed a petition accusing Webb of complicity in a discriminatory policy. Namesake aside, the technological achievement of NASA's newest telescope is uncontroversial. It's set to take the success of the Hubble a step further. What we're going to get is a telescope that's about 100 times more powerful than Hubble says Amber Strawn, an astrophysicist at NASA who works on the web. Light The web's other advantage is the type of light it collects. Light comes in a lot of different varieties. The human eye can see only a narrow band known as visible light, but the universe contains lots and lots of light outside this range, including the higher frequency, higher energy forms, ultraviolet gamma rays. Then there's the lower energy light with longer wavelengths, infrared, microwaves, and radio. The Hubble Space Telescope collects visible light, ultraviolet, and a little bit of infrared. The Webb is primarily an infrared telescope, so it sees light that's in a lower wavelength than what our eyes can see. This seems nerdy and technical, but it's actually what allows Webb to look further back in time than the Hubble. The Future The fact of the matter is that the James Webb Telescope is going to be a game changer, no matter how you look at it. If it can see things and detect things like methane gas from across the universe, then who knows what it will find when we aim it at just the right spot in space? Now, can we guarantee that it will be able to detect life on other planets? No, but it's leagues ahead of our previous telescope in the Hubble, and that one made groundbreaking discoveries. So imagine what will happen when the James Webb goes fully functional soon and thus is able to scan the stars. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at the James Webb Telescope and how it aims to help make us more capable of detecting life out on other planets? Do you think that this is indeed the way we're going to figure out where life might be in the universe? Or do you think it's going to be a bit more complicated than that? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time on the channel.